All right guys, so what I want to show you now is all the glassware that you would find in a bar. Now this is a pretty comprehensive collection of glasses. You usually will not have this many glasses in your bar, but I just kind of wanted to show you the basic types of glasses that you could have and what they would be used for. Now you could get to your bar and you'll have like a highball glass and like a tall glass and that's it. And so you kind of have to make do with all the drinks just in those two glasses. So just be prepared that sometimes you're going to have to just make do with what you got. All right. So starting off right in the middle here, this little guy, we have the shot glass. So this is a one ounce shot glass. And I don't know if you can see that line on there, but the little line right below the top of the glass, that is one ounce. So this is a shot, shot of tequila, shot of whiskey, shot of vodka. You can also use it as a measuring tool. So that is a shot glass. Then we have a rocks glass. So a rocks glass, this is generally five ounces around there, five to seven ounces. And this is alcohol and ice only. So there's no mix, no juice, no soda, no tonic, nothing that you could legally give a little kid would go into that drink. It's just ice and alcohol and that's it. Rocks glass. Then there's a highball, AKA a bucket, AKA old fashioned glass. Now highball glasses can range a little bit. There are the traditional about seven ounces size and but they can get a little bit bigger this is also a highball glass but as you can tell it's quite a bit bigger so it just depends on your bar again what kind of glasses they want to get so these are both highball glasses this is a traditional size this is one that like people like to see like mm, getting hooked up a little bit more now with highball glasses remember the guideline for highballs is one ounce of alcohol and non-alcoholic filler usually coming off your soda gun so your rum and coke and vodka sodas and gin and tonics, those are going into here, seven and sevens, one ounce of alcohol, and then fill with non-alcoholic mixer filler. Highball, AKA bucket, AKA old fashioned glass. Then you have your snifters. So snifters are these cool looking glasses and there's smaller sifters and then there's larger snifters. Now a snifter is just designed to get oxygen to the alcohol. So this is basically kind of like a wine glass, but without the stem on it. And the whole point with these big bulb glasses like that is that there's a lot of oxygen that gets to the surface of the alcohol. Because what happens when alcohol and oxygen interact, some of the alcohol will evaporate and they'll call that 10% for the angels. Who knows if it's exactly 10%, it's just the same and some of that alcohol will evaporate and then the flavors will come out in the alcohol more. So it's the same thing that they're doing with a wine glass, but this is for like nice alcohols. Uh, brandies and cognacs are very popular. That's why this is usually called a cognac snifter. This little small guy just could be used for smaller portions or like a single shot of something. Snifters usually want to pour up to the wide point of the glass. Usually it's a two ounce neat pour, N-E-A-T, means it's room temperature, it's not over the ice, it's not chilled, N-E-A-T is neat. And if it's something nice, then you're gonna to wanna to put it into a snifter glass. Next one is an Irish coffee mug. So Irish coffee mugs, or a footed mug, also called sometimes referred to as a footed mug. This is pretty basic. Anything that has coffee and alcohol. So does it have coffee in it? Yes. Does it have alcohol in it? Yes. Put it in that glass. And if you don't have that, then you're just going to use a regular coffee mug. Now, coffee drinks usually have one ounce of alcohol and then you fill with coffee. Most of them you're going to top with whipped cream. And we'll learn about those in the coffees lessons. But pretty basic, if you have this, coffee and alcohol goes in an Irish coffee mug. Then we have the classic beer pint. 16 ounce beer pint. This is for draft beers. This might also be the only tall glass that you have in your bar, so you might make all your tall drinks in this. But this is specifically made to pour a pint of beer. This is a classic beer pint. This also works very nice as a shaker top. So with your shaker tin, instead of your mixing tin, you use a pint glass on top, as you've seen me do a million times before. Next we have a tall glass or a Collins glass. 
There's actually a drink called Tom Collins that's very popular. And that's where it gets its name because Tom Collins was such a popular drink. So a tall glass, this is a 12 ounce tall glass and it is designed to have cocktails over the ice that have at least an ounce and a half of alcohol and then filled with mixer fillers. So tall glass, AKA Collins glass, ounce and a half of alcohol and non-alcoholic mixer filler. Then we have the classic martini glass. Now there are various sizes of these. Generally they're either going to be four and a half ounces or nine ounces. This is a four and a half ounce martini glass. So this is pretty standard. This is probably going to be 90% mm, of your bars carrying this size. They can actually have all the way down to smaller two ounce martini glasses. The traditional James Bond shaken not stirred martini is actually a two ounce martini. So that you might have the classic small martini glasses. However, all the shaken chilled drinks today are generally three to four ounces. So you're usually going to be having this size of a glass. Now, if you have a larger glass, then you're usually not filling it up. It's like a wine glass. You don't fill a wine glass full of wine. There's, there's some room at the top. So if you had a huge birdbath martini glass, you're probably not going to fill it to the top. If you're not quite sure, you can always just ask, go, hey, how many ounces do we make of martinis? And then just tack on the proper pour count to make sure that you have adequate amounts filling that glass. So martini glass, this is for anything straight up. Anytime anybody asks for any cocktail straight up, Straight up means shaken and strained into a stemmed glass, such as this. So martini glass. Next we have our tropical hurricane glass. Now this is a big, tall, pretty, curvy glass. A lot of bars don't have these, and it's I think it's just because they break really easy. This is for your fruity, tropical rum drinks. So this is a drink that your Mai Tais, your Pina Coladas, your Bahama Mamas, your Blue Hawaiians, any sort of fruity tropical drink is going to go into a hurricane glass. Now, kind of rare, like I said, most bars don't have these. So if you don't have them, then you're just going to make them into a tall glass, like a Collins glass. So when we go through the lessons where you might be using a hurricane glass in the tropicals, I actually show you how to pour them into a Collins glass because these are, like I said, not very common, poolside in Vegas and cruise ships, and that's really kind of the only place that you'll see them. Some restaurant bars, but generally you don't see these too often. So you'll always have a tall glass in your bar. Sometimes you'll have a hurricane glass. Now, if you do have a hurricane glass, as you'll see, these are real close in size, so you basically would make it in there the exact same way that we learned it into a, a Collins glass. So hurricane glass, big, tall, fruity, tropical rum drinks. Then we have our wine glasses. So a wine glass is a wine glass. The wine connoisseurs will tell you that you need a different red wine glass than if you have a white wine glass. I'm a wine snob so I can talk shit. Generally, with white wine and red wine glasses, the difference you'll notice here, that red wine glasses tend to be a little bit wider and a little bit shorter. And that is just because you want to get more oxygen to the surface of the red wine because it needs to breathe. They need to decant the wine is the fancy term that they'll use to just, all right, dude, got it. The, the wine needs to breathe. I got it. So red wine and a white wine, a little bit taller, deeper glass because white wines don't necessarily need to breathe quite as much as a red wine would. And they'll have a stemmed glass for the white wines because... You're supposed to hold it and sip the wine like this because the heat from your hand can damage the flavor of the wine. I always say if the heat from your hand is damaging the flavor of the wine, you need to drink the wine faster. So it sounds crazy, but that's really the reason why they put stems on wine glasses. Do you have to have a red wine and a white wine glass to drink them? No, of course not. If you only have one wine glass, which is very common for most bars, then just use that. But just if you want to get into semantics, red wine glasses, a little bit wider, more oxygen so it can breathe and open up the flavor. So kind of like the brandy snifters, remember when oxygen gets in there, it opens up and you can taste the flavors of the wine a lot better. And then the white wine glass, a little deeper, tall stem so that the heat from your hand doesn't ruin the flavor. And then the last one we have is a champagne flute. 
Now, champagne glasses are for dun, 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 champagne, mimosas, grand mimosas, anything that's going to have champagne. So this is just a wine glass that's gone anorexic, just nice and skinny and tall. So champagne into a champagne flute. And if you don't have champagne flutes, then you can always pour your champagne into wine glasses in your bar. Okay, so that is your lesson for your glasses. Remember that you probably won't have all these in your bar, and you'll usually just kind of have to make do with what you have. Luckily, most cocktail recipes don't get crazy. They're usually not outside of a martini glass, a tall glass, or a highball glass. But if you have all these other cool ones, then use those as well. It's just more fun stuff to make cool drinks. All right, cool. That's it for this lesson. I'll see you next time.